Hey creators, in this video, I'm gonna show you everything I know about this guy, the DJI Mavic Air 2, in a step-by-step -step guide so you can capture footage like what you're about to see without having to spend all the hours learning everything yourself like I did. Right here is what you can expect today. All right, let's get into it. Before we dive straight into step number one, I wanna spend the next minute or two explaining a little bit why the Mavic Air 2? Why not the Mavic Mini 2? Why not the Mavic 2 Pro? I believe the Mavic Air 2 is currently the best value drone on the market. The best balance between specs, performance, and price. Here's why. Broken down very simply, it's got 4K 60. It's bigger brother, which is twice the price. The Mavic Pro 2 doesn't even have that. If you like to shoot in slow motion, this is huge. It also has the best video transmission range in the game with OcuSync 2.0. That means it has a 6.2 mile transmission. However, I do think that's a little bit exaggerated given my experience, but I'll get into that a little bit later in the video. It's still extremely capable of flying well beyond line of sight, which means being able to see the drone with your eyes, not through the screen, because technically it's only legal to fly a drone if you can see it in the air. The Mavic Air 2 has the best battery length in the game, 34 minutes, as opposed to 30 to 31 minutes on the Mavic Mini 2 and the Mavic 2 Pro. Now, a few minutes difference may not seem like a whole lot, but to me, it definitely is. When you're out there, it's golden hour, conditions are perfect, the amount of times that I've begged with those other drones to have just a couple more minutes of flying, a lot. So those extra three or four minutes, huge for me. It's just the right size for me. It's really not too small. It's really not too big. I think it's a perfect, happy medium given all the specs and the value you're getting with this drone. Some of the downfalls of the Mavic Air 2 might be this large controller, but to me, this is actually a pro. I love this controller, but it is about twice the size as the Mavic 2 Pro controller, so some people might prefer a smaller controller. Also, the image quality and the low light performance on the Mavic Air 2 is not gonna be quite as good as the Mavic 2 Pro. However, I think for about 90% of people, it's gonna be more than enough, and it's pretty darn close in my opinion. Lastly, if you want the smallest possible drone that's gonna take up the least amount of space in your bag, sure, the Mavic Mini 2 might be better for you, but again, this is pretty close in size to that. It's only a little bit bigger, and for me, the size is way, way worth the added features that you get with this drone. All right, now you understand some of the pros and cons of the Mavic Air 2, you get why I think this drone is so awesome. Let's get straight into step one, first time proper setup. So open the drone up, tear it apart. When I was opening it, there were a ton of tiny little sticky things, so make sure you get all of those off, even in the small little crevices, there were like a ton of those things, so get rid of those. This next point is super important for those who bought the Fly More combo, so pay attention. Your batteries are in hibernation mode when they arrive in the Fly More combo. You need to charge each battery to 100% using the single charger instead of the hub charger it comes with. It's okay to use the hub charger and charge all three batteries at once after you've individually charged each battery to 100%. It took me forever to figure this out. I kept putting my batteries on the hub three at once right when I opened it up and they just wouldn't charge. So make sure you do that. Next up, the controller. The sticks are all cuddled up underneath, which I love that DJI did that. Such an awesome design feature. Screw those in and then plug your phone in. On your controller, you'll notice three settings. Tripod, normal, and sport. Go ahead and just leave it in normal to begin. Double check that you install your propellers correctly. Follow the directions that come with them. It's not that hard to mess up, but if you do mess them up, good things aren't gonna happen. So make sure you put your uh, propellers on perfectly. And before you fly for the first time, it will give you a notice 
double checking that you've done that correctly. And lastly for step one, pop your micro SD card in. We will format it later, but we're not gonna worry about that yet. Step two, preparing for your very first flight. Ideally, you wanna do this at home with good internet connection, good Wi-Fi. We're gonna dive into specific camera settings in step three. I'm just trying to get you almost off the ground here. First, download the DJI Fly app to your phone. There's a bunch of different DJI apps, and yes, it has to be this one. Once your batteries are fully charged, go ahead and throw one in, turn your drone and controller on. Controller first, then drone. Grab your phone and turn the screen lock orientation setting off. This will make it so when you grab your controller, doesn't matter which way your phone's flipped, you're gonna view the app in the correct orientation. The amount of times I've gone to fly, open the app, and then it just wouldn't switch around and I had to cancel the whole app down and do that step. Again, just get in the habit of doing that before you open the app. Also, while you're in that menu, put your phone on airplane mode. The worst thing is when you're trying to focus on getting your shots, getting your settings right, and calls are coming in, completely filling your whole screen, or texts are flying in the whole time, nothing worse than that. Once you've done those things and your controller, your drone is on, on, your phone is connected, everything's connected up, go ahead and go through DJI's activation sequence. Just follow the directions, it's pretty easy, it only takes a couple minutes. If you don't have an account with DJI yet, you're gonna have to go ahead and do that in this step. Again, takes like a minute or two. All right, step three, optimizing all settings for the best footage possible. Let's get your settings dialed. I'm only gonna graze over what I think are the most important settings here to save you time because I know you're busy. Feel free to, of course, mess around and play with these settings. In fact, I encourage it. I just don't wanna get into every little nook and cranny of the app because this video would be very long. I'm just trying to deliver the most important content in the most efficient way here. All right, number one, format your SD card. This is important and you wanna do this before every flight so that you don't go to put your drone in the air, you hit record, golden hours pop and you're getting amazing stuff or you're about to, and then you run out of card space. Now, the Mavic Air 2 does have eight gigabytes of internal storage. Worst comes to worst if that's happened, but in the past, speaking from personal experience, I've gotten lazy. I'll let those eight gigabytes fill up. So then that and my card are filled up and I totally miss the shot. So just don't do it before you fly anytime go ahead and format your SD card. In the beginning, you wanna go into safety mode and make sure your obstacle detection is on. That's gonna use the sensors around the drone to try to avoid crashes if you get too close to certain subjects. Once you feel much more comfortable with the drone, you have tens and tens of flights under your belt and you're really feeling good about it, I would actually recommend turning that setting off because it just kind of limits the shots you can get. It limits the creative things you can do with the drone. For example, if you're trying to fly between two tight branches or two tight trees, it's not gonna let you do it. It's just gonna stop the drone before you go through those trees. So once you feel more comfortable, go ahead and just turn that setting off. But of course, be careful because it's not gonna be looking out for you as much. Number three, increase the max altitude that the drone can fly. Now generally the legal limit is about 400 feet, so be very careful flying any higher than that. I don't really need to explain why, just be very careful if you're gonna fly higher than that and I didn't tell you to do that. When you open the drone though, it's not gonna let you fly very high, that's why it's important to increase that limit to something under 400 feet ideally so that you can fly a little bit higher. Now when it comes to the distance, like I mentioned before, line of sight is what's legal. So you have to be able to see the drone with your two eyes for that to be legal. Any farther than that, you can't see the drone. That's not technically legal. So again, feel free to do what you want, but you didn't hear it from me. You can fly this drone a little bit more than six miles out, which is insanely far. It's the farthest you can fly any of DJI's drones as of right now. However, I flew it about a mile out over the ocean behind this big rock and I lost video transmission signal for the first time with this drone. All my feed cut out, I couldn't see anything. I had to smash that return to home button and luckily started flying home and I got my signal back and all was good, but I'll have to keep testing how far you can actually fly this drone. I think that was my issue because I flew behind that rock and so it couldn't get transmission signal, so I don't know. But a mile is more than enough. I think you'd be fine setting your distance at about half a mile in the beginning. Hit control and go to phone charging and turn that mode on. You don't want your phone to die while you're flying the drone. This is another amazing thing with the Mavic Air 2 over the previous Mavic Air 1. In the background there, 
that drone did not let you do that. I flew that drone with my phone down to like one, two percent. And let me tell you, that's stressful. So it's an amazing feature that this controller lets you charge your phone, probably because it's a little bigger, there's more battery space. So I like to turn that feature on pretty much always. Number five, we're gonna start getting into the actual camera settings now. So format it as an MP4, not an MOV. This is because it's the most widely used. It's just gonna work the best across the board in most editing platforms. .MOV and .MP4 are pretty similar. There's not a huge difference. It has to do with compression, but for me, I go MP4. Colors, I choose D cine like That's gonna produce the best colors because out of camera, it gives you the most flat, least contrast and saturated image. So you have the most control in the editing when you're color correcting, which I'm gonna get into later in this video. But if you're planning to not do any color correction or any color grading, you might wanna leave it on the normal mode because straight out of the camera, it will have a little bit more saturation and contrast, but I don't really like the way it looks, so I wouldn't recommend it. I use H.265 for the coding format because it has a slightly better compression, giving you a slightly better image, but it could slow your computer down depending on the specs you have. Test the H.265 footage with your computer. If you have issues, if it bogs down your editing platform, just use H.264, it'll be fine. But if you're gonna shoot in that buttery 4K60 slow motion feature the Mavic Air 2 does have, you have to shoot in H.265. Turn your histogram on, and I'm gonna explain why this is super important in step four, but just turn that guy on for now. White balance, both depending on the situation. For me, to be honest, when I'm flying my drone, I'm on auto most of the time. I rarely ever use auto on my actual mirrorless cameras, but on my drone, I will admit, I do use it. It's because I'm usually running around trying to grab a quick shot before the sun goes down. It's generally fast paced when I'm flying my drone, so it's just one more setting to look after. But technically, you wanna shoot in manual, go to 5600 Kelvin, that's what you would use for daylight, 5600K. The downfall to using auto white balance is your white balance could shift and change depending on what you're filming and you're not gonna have a consistent look. I know it's not good that I should be saying this, but I've always done it. No one's ever noticed in my videos. And yeah, it's, it's not the proper thing, but whatever, I think it still looks fine. Let's jump into your frame rates. I like to shoot mainly 4K wide and 24 FPS. We are gonna dial these settings in in step four by using ND filters once we're already on location ready to fly. You might wanna expand your map on the bottom left corner by tapping it just so you can have a little bit better understanding where you are. I'll use it about 50% of the times, just kind of depending. All right, we're out here in the field now. Hopefully the wind does not come through on my lav mic because it is a little bit breezy out here. The sun's setting, you're super close to being able to take off, but there's just a couple more settings you need to dial in before doing that. All right, so we're gonna quickly dive back into the app. We're gonna go to safety, scroll down to compass normal and IMU normal. I've set the IMU normal back at home because you kind of have to have a level surface for that to work properly, but I like to set the compass every time I get to a new location. So let's go ahead and calibrate that. To do that, we just hit calibrate, follow DJI's instructions. I'm gonna hit start. So basically what you do, you've probably seen people do it before, it's no different with this drone, is you do a horizontal 360. Once that's complete, it will tell you to do a vertical 360, just like that, hopefully you can see it. And it'll tell you when you're done, calibration successful. There you go, that's all it takes. Why is compass calibration important? Well, it essentially ensures that your drone is gonna fly like it should. If you don't have your compass completely calibrated properly, uh, you might be trying to fly in a straight line and drop elevation, things like that. It might drift and you just don't wanna deal with those things. Part three of step four, proper ND and shutter speed selection. Now. If you don't understand the basic fundamentals of filmmaking already, it might be over your head. The section's probably gonna get a little confusing. So right off the bat, I'm gonna say, go ahead, throw it in auto instead of manual, like I'm gonna show you how to set up and start flying that way. Pro tip is to kind of look at what the automatic settings are and then replicate those for yourself in manual mode. If you're looking to get the best quality footage out of your Mavic Air 2 though, these are the settings you're going to want to master. First things first, you wanna throw your settings into manual mode down in the bottom right corner. Get that out of auto, throw that into manual mode. Next, you're going to want to figure out which frame rate you wanna film in. 
For this part, I'm gonna stay in 24 FPS, which is basically real time, full speed. If you want to, you can go up to 60 FPS, which is gonna be slow motion. But for now, I'm gonna stick at 4K, 24 frames per second. Third, double that frame rate for proper shutter speed. So since I'm shooting at 1 24th of a second, one over 24, we wanna be at about 150. Technically, that'd be 1 48th, but a lot of cameras don't give you that option, including this one. So we're gonna select 1 50th shutter. Say we were to go to 4K 60, again, shutter would double, and we would want to be at 1 1 20th of a second shutter. Here's what footage looks like when your shutter is not double your frame rate. If you're off by maybe 1 20th or 1 40th, it's not a big deal, but if you crank your shutter speed up to 1 500th of a second, instead of using an ND filter, you get this awful looking flicker and it just doesn't look cinematic at all. Fourth, play around with your ND filters until you find one that puts your histogram right in the middle of that chart. So I'm gonna be shooting this direction. So you see those waveforms, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna aim it somewhere super dark now. So it goes all the way to the left, meaning it's underexposed. And now I'm gonna point it straight at the sun, which actually looks good because I already have an ND16 on there. But if I didn't and this was super bright, then that histogram would be all the way over to the right. So this looks pretty good at ND16. Now the filters that DJI provides you with the Fly More kit, they give you an ND16, 64, and I believe a 256. I wish they gave us like an ND4, an ND8, maybe an ND32, something in the middle. So it's a little bit tricky to get perfect exposure using your ND filters that are provided, but this looks pretty good. This is close. Say it was a little bit too dark. I could lighten that up by going down to like 140. You could get away with that or say it's too bright and you have to crank to 1 100th. I'd say that's okay too. It's still gonna look pretty good. So you're basically ready to fly now and get that epic footage you've been waiting for. To take off, push both joysticks to the center to start the motors. Then once you're ready, slowly press the left joystick up to take off. I suggest taking off and landing a few times just to get the hang of it. You can do it manually as I've just showed, or you can do it in app. So it's actually getting pretty dark now. I'm gonna land it and take off the ND filter, just have ND zero essentially. So golden hour can be tricky because now we're pretty overexposed. So we're kind of in between. That's, that's what I was saying, how the ND16 is a little bit too much. I wish I had an ND8 or an ND4 would be perfect right now. So I really have no other option here than to crank the shutter so that I get that MM on the right there, the bottom right corner to about zero, which is what properly exposed is considered to this application here, the DJI app. One quick note before we get to our final step, step five, is to not run these batteries lower than about 20, 30%. It's kind of just best practice to do that. When you run it lower than that, there's two things that can happen. One, you run the risk of a battery failing, which you do not want. Your drone's gonna fly out of the air, it could be dangerous. And two, it's just gonna shorten the longevity of the lifespan of your batteries. If you do that over and over and over, say you run it down to like five, 10%, your battery isn't gonna last as long. All right, so your drone's in the air, you're flying around, great. You got the thing off the ground. Now you need to dial in the actual movements that's gonna give you good footage. Since this applies to all drones, not just the Mavic Air 2, I don't wanna go too much into it here, but down in the description, I do have a free guide for you to download, which walks you through all my steps. I believe it's about a five step guide that's gonna show you exactly how to get cinematic looking footage. So go ahead, down in the description, grab that, it's completely free. All right, now let's color correct and grade some footage. I'm gonna be using Final Cut Pro 10 because that's what I edit in, but the things I'm gonna show you will work in Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, basically any of the other main editing platforms, things might just be located in different locations in your editing software. Also, I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly and it's also gonna be a fairly basic color grade and tutorial because I don't wanna to get too into it. Most people, I'd say probably 90% of you, this is gonna be plenty to make your footage look amazing. If you are interested in a more in-depth grading tutorial for the Mavic Air 2, I do have that, I'll link it. But without further ado, let's dive right in. I'm gonna color correct and grade two clips. First, this guy, I think it's a little bit overexposed. And then this one, it's a little bit underexposed. So I wanna show you how to deal with that because the reality is most of the time, our footage is not gonna be perfectly, perfectly exposed. And if it is, 
cheers to you. It's always best to try and get your exposure right in camera, but that's not always the case. So I want to show you how to deal with that. First, what I like to do is go to window and make sure we're working in the color and effects workspace. So if you're on default, window, workspaces, color and effects. Today, all we're gonna be dealing with is essentially this Luma waveform on the top left corner here. We're not gonna to get too much into the vector scopes or RGBs or anything in this video. I will get into that into the other video. But so I like to start with this top left corner here, the Luma waveforms and go over to your color panel and start by getting correct exposure. So essentially you want your darks, your blacks to be as close to zero as possible and then your highlights to be kind of in the 80 to 100 range. That's what I think looks good. So obviously this clip is a little bit overexposed. So I'm just gonna pull our blacks over here on the left. These are our blacks, her shadows down just a little bit. So that right there is Eli, if you can see that. This is pretty much everything else. This looks like it's kind of the waves. So I'm just gonna pull this down a little bit because if I go too far, Eli's obviously gonna get super dark and that does not look good. So I'm just gonna pull the blacks down a little bit. And then as you can see, our highlights are a little bit under. So I'm just gonna bump those up just a tad, which is gonna pull that blacks up again. So I'm gonna pull those right back down. So as you can see, already a big difference from our D-log straight out of camera. Next, what I like to do is go into saturation and just bump that a little bit. This is our master here, shadows, midtones, highlights. I like to literally take the master, bump it up, kind of like three quarters away to the top with this um, D-log footage from the Mavic Air 2. Next, I want to get my white balance. So to do that, I'm going to go to our color wheels and play with the temperature here. So standard is set to 5,000, you saw that. I'm gonna warm this up a little bit because it's kind of a beachy vibe. It was a little cool, a little blue in my opinion. So I'm gonna pull those warms right up, create that warm kind of beach vibe. So that looks pretty good. So as you can see, we've already done a lot. Wow, it's already looking nice. Next, I'm going to go to our color curves and implement a bit of an S curve, which is literally how it looks an S curve. What you're doing is you're bringing your blacks down a little bit to bring back some contrast, give you some depth, and then you're bumping up your highlights again to kind of brighten the whole image and compensate for what you did down here. So again, I know I went through that super quick, so I'll do it again. You wanna to go to the left half of this line, which are your darks, and then here's your midtones, and here's your highlights again. Pull those blacks down a little bit, add some contrast, and then bump those highlights up just a bit. Now, for most people, you might be done. This is a color corrected image right here in my opinion. But what I like to do now is I'm gonna make a couple colors pop that I want. So that blue sky looks a little bit desaturated for me still. So there's a few ways you can do this. You can use a gradient up there, but I think the quickest way to do it is gonna be to go into your hue and saturation curves, hue versus sat, and which is saturation. And we're basically gonna bump up the saturation of just the blue in the sky here. So we wanna click our eyedropper tool, select a nice and blue spot on the sky, and then raise that guy up to a point where we think looks nice. I think that looks pretty nice. Now, you can do this the other way around, so I'm gonna add another one. And I think the red in Eli's jacket pops a little too much. So I'm gonna do the same thing, red, and I'm gonna pull that down it's a little distracting so i think that looks pretty darn nice so for this clip here i'm going to do a quick before and after that's looking pretty darn good here's a little trick if you want to give it a quick little cinematic flare i will bring in a letterbox which is going to give you that cinematic aspect ratio 2.35 to 1. i'm going to move it around a little bit eh, that looks pretty good so look at that, I mean, that's a pretty darn looking cinematic, whoa, clip to me. So again, show you the before and then the after. Looks nice. Let's move on to our second clip. All right, clip number two here. This one needs a good amount of work in my opinion. It's looking a little bit lifeless. 
I'm gonna blaze through this one a lot faster than the first one because now that you understand what I'm doing, you can kind of follow along. Also feel free to pause the video at any point, rewind and rewatch things. So first I'm gonna start again by getting our exposure correct. This one's not too bad, but I am gonna pull down the blacks ever so slightly there. You can see there's a little bit of noise on the image because the Mavic 2 Pro does not have the best low light, so I don't wanna crush the blacks too hard because it's just gonna get grainy. I'm gonna pull our highlights actually down just a smidge because they were a little bit blown out up here. So I'm gonna pull those down just a smidge so you can really see those rays. Again, gonna bump that saturation up. Gonna go over to our color, not color curves, always mess that one up, color wheels. Bring that temperature up a little bit again to match that last clip. We want that golden hour sunset look. So that's already bringing that in. Look how blue that was before and now how nice and orange that is there. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna go into our hue and saturation curves. I want that orange light to pop a lot more than it is. So I'm gonna see if I can bring that up. So I use my eyedropper, click the sky right there, selected the orange spot. I'm gonna set, oh yeah, that's looking much better. Oh yeah, that's what it looked like more like in real life. So that's what we wanna do. Again, I'm gonna do another one of those. This is our second one, eyedropper, that little bit of blue sky, I do want to pop up. I don't know if that's gonna work. I'm doing this here in real time. Nope, that's not really gonna work. So I'm gonna do it myself. I'm gonna pull that blue up and it's not really doing anything. So scratch that, I'm gonna delete that one. Honestly, that's looking pretty good to me already. I mean, look at that difference. I'm happy with that. I think that matches this clip pretty nicely. Still, this one might be a little overexposed, might bring that down just a little bit, bring all of the exposure down just a tad. That looks good. And then that looks nice. Let's put them side by side. Sick. I'll put the more in-depth color grading video I mentioned earlier right here. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd highly appreciate a subscription so you can see what comes next from this channel. I'll see you over in that next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.